For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and your tapestry needle. This is my favorite tapestry needle. You can see how it has the pointy end. And they have two terms for these type of needles. You have your darning needle and you have your tapestry needle. One of them usually has a blunt point and one usually has a sharp point. I like the ones with the sharp point, but you do have to be careful that you don't poke yourself. Some people prefer to work with the blunted point, and that's fine too for this crochet project. There are certain crochet product projects that the pointy end would work better, and one of those examples would be the kitchen towel um, crochet toppers, towel toppers. I'm using some of my leftover yarn. I have the turquoise pound of love, and I have the Bernat yarn, variegated yarn. And I have a new blog now. It's called, you just go to www.helenmaycrochet.com, and that is where my new blog is going to be. And I post my videos there, and also I put down the material list. What's also nice about my new blog is I have Google Translate for those. I get asked a lot about having my video tutorials in other languages, which my video tutorials are going to stay in English. However, I will have some free written out patterns that I'm going to start having available on my new blog. The first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to size your baby hat. And you can either make the chain ahead of time and then use that to measure around the head of the baby. So this one, you can see, fits perfectly around the head of my baby doll. This baby doll fits sizes three to six months of age. And I started with the chain of 70. So you can start that way and then you can take your tape measure and measure the chain. So my chain measures approximately 15 inches. The other thing I want to mention is if you use a different size crochet hook, on my Crochet Ways of Love baby blanket I used a 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. You could use this larger hook for the Crochet Ways of Love baby hat, but the only problem is you're not going to be able to start with a chain of 70. Your chain will be a lot smaller because you're using a larger hook. So you're going to have to me measure your starting chain. So for our baby hat, we're going to be starting at the brim of the hat and then working our way to the top of the hat. So go ahead and grab whatever color that you want for your hat. And then I'm using my variegated colored yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, and then I'm going to take my crochet hook, and again I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. I'm going to go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then you can bring the loop around the crochet hook, not too tight, not too loose, 
Then you're going to make your chain. So I would recommend a chain of 70 if you're making the same size hat as me. I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, so it's a chain of two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 70, and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 70, then you're going to take and hold the second chain from the hook with your middle finger and your thumb and then you're going to make a chain of two. One, two. And we're going to start making the second row of the hat. So now we're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So go ahead and yarn over and then you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook which is the stitch that you are holding. You're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to make your double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two of the loops. Two loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. So now you can see that that first chain we made is the first double crochet for this row, and then you just made the second double crochet. And now you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, and you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. I'm just going to show a few more for the beginners. So go ahead, finish making your double crochets, one double crochet into every stitch back across, and then come back. I just finished my last double crochet in the last stitch, and this is what your work should look like. For beginners, I would recommend counting all of your stitches. See the stitch on the end is one, two, three, etc. Just count them all. Make sure you still have 70. And now we're ready to move to fold the hat together. So you're going to take your work and you're just going to fold the brim in half. And you want the right side facing towards you. So the, the part of the hat that you want showing on the outside is facing towards you and then the wrong side is on the inside of the hat. Make sure that it's not twisted. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. So here you can see the top stitch. So here's the stitch on the end, the very first chain that we made. And you want to go into that top stitch with your crochet hook. Then you're just going to take and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and chain one, and then turn your work. And now you're just going to set your work down because we want to join the bottom of the brim. So you're going to take your tapestry needle, you're going to put it onto the loose yarn end at the bottom here. You can go ahead and make a loop so your work won't go un come undone and then just turn your work over making sure you're still not twisting the brim of the hat and then you're just going to join the bottom ends and just tie a knot. Someone had asked me why I did this this way and why not just join the chain, the initial chain. 
I used to join the initial chain but it always started twisting and made it more difficult so I found this method to be much easier but if you want to join the initial chain that's fine that'll work as well so now I'm just tying my knot to join the bottom and then I'm just leaving my loose yarn in for now because this works as a yarn marker so you know when you're back to where you started and we can bury it later then you're just going to turn your work back to where we started and this is how my work looks not twisted and now we're going to join our new color before I join the new color I just wanted to show you the nice fit and how the chart really helps for measuring this is a perfect fit for my baby doll and she is um, a baby doll that fits three to six month old baby clothes So now you're just going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over, and then bring up a loop. So now you have two loops on your hook. Go ahead and grab your new color, and then you're going to take and grab the new color and bring it through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to chain one. Then you can take and set your work down. You're going to cut the previous colored yarn. In my case, it was the variegated yarn. Then you can take and tie a knot. Then we're ready to start our next round and we're also going to be burying our loose yarn ends as we work so just kind of hold those loose yarn ends to the side there now you're going to take and go into the next stitch over you're going to go behind the loose yarn ends bring up a loop now you have two loops of the new color on your crochet hook yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet now we're ready, ready to begin the next round with our new color. The first thing you're going to do is start with a chain of three. One, two, three. That counts as the first double crochet for this round. So we're going to make one double crochet into every stitch around and you should still end up with 70 stitches when you come back to your initial stitch. So when you go into the next stitch, make sure you go behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, make your double crochet. I always try to bury my loose yarn ends as much as possible. It just saves having to bury them later. So yarn over, go into the next stitch over, behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, complete your double crochet, and then you're just going to make one double crochet in every stitch around. I'm just going to work one more, some yarning over, go into the next stitch, behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, complete your double crochet, So go ahead, finish one double crochet in every stitch around back to the beginning. So I finished my last double crochet stitch and I have a total of 70 double crochet stitches which is exactly what I want. Then you're going to take and join your, you're going to slip stitch to the top stitch of the first chain three. So make sure you get into that top stitch yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to slip stitch and join together.
to slip stitch and join together. Now we're going to begin the first wave round. Now to complete a full wave you'll need two rounds. So the first round will be the bottom half and then the next round will be the top half. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then I use my yarn marker so I know when I'm back to the beginning. If you don't have, if you went ahead and buried your loose yarn in, you can place a stitch marker there. So I finished my first single crochet. We want to make a total of five single crochet into the first five stitches. So this first one counts as one. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make your second single crochet. Next stitch, bring up a loop, make your third single crochet. Next stitch, fourth single crochet, and then the last stitch for your fifth single crochet. Then you're going to make a total of one double crochet into the next five stitches. So one double crochet into the next five stitches. So now I completed a full bottom portion of a wave. So you can see I finished 10 stitches so that's why you need a multiple of 10 for this crochet wave stitch but if you only have half of it which is a multiple of five, that should work too. You're just going to end with half of a wave. So preferably you would want the ten stitch multiple of ten, but you can get away with a multiple of five. Then you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So now we're going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches. So I have one single crochet into the next five stitches and then one double crochet into the next five stitches. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started. And then come back. Okay, so I just finished my last double crochet and so here you can see I finished with a full wave because I used a multiple of 10. Now someone that uses a multiple of 5 will probably end with the single crochets touching. So it's no big deal. It just won't have the full wave. Now we're going to we finished the bottom portion of the wave and this is what it looks like. Now we're going to complete the top portion of the wave. So for our next round, you're going to look at the previous rows single crochets. So you can see I have five single crochets in the previous row, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to work into that next stitch and we're going to match the previous rows stitch. So I need one single crochet into the next five stitches. And you'll see how the single crochet line up perfectly with the previous rows single crochet. Then I'm going to make one double crochet into the next five previous row double crochets. So you can see how the rows are lining up. The double crochets are over the previous row's double crochet and the single crochets are over the previous row's single crochets. And that's just one way that you'll know that your count is right and that you're doing it or making it correctly. 
So I just finished the top portion of one full wave. Just want to show it to you. So here you can see the single crochets line up and then here's the double crochets. So that's considered one full wave. And we're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So now I'm going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches and then one double crochet into the next five stitches. And you just keep repeating this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. So now I just finished my last wave, last stitch for the, um, com to complete the wave. This is what my work looks like all the way around. You can see how all the stitches line up to form the wave. And now we're ready to change colors for the next row. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and now we're going to join our new color. So now I'm getting my variegated yarn, the same color I used for the brim of the hat. And I'm going to grab the yarn and bring it through both loops on my hook. Then you can go ahead and chain one. And then just set the work down. I'm going to cut my previous colored yarn. Then I'm going to take and tie a knot, just like we did before. Then you're going to take your new color, and remember you still want the stitches to line up. Since we're starting a new wave, and it's going to be the bottom portion of the wave, we're going to be starting with a double crochet. So we're in the first stitch, so you're going to want to chain three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next round, and I'm going to be burying my loose yarn ends as I work. So now, remember, you want a total of five stitches, and they should line up. The only difference is now they're going to be different stitches because we have a new wave that we're starting. So we finished our first chain three, which counts as our first double crochet for this net round. Now you're going to make a double crochet into the second stitch. And it's going to line up with the previous row's single crochet stitch. And you can kind of pull your loose yarn in to bring it through. So you're going to make one double crochet into each of these five stitches and they should each be in a previous row's single crochet stitch. So there's my third double crochet, fourth, and fifth. And you can see how each of my double crochets, five double crochets, lines up with the previous rows, single crochet. Now I'm ready for my next five stitches, and you can see it lines up perfectly with the previous rows, double crochets. So now in the next stitch, I'm going to make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into each of the next five stitches. I'm going behind my loose yarn ends and burying my loose yarn ends as I crochet. It's my third single crochet, fourth, and fifth. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Before I continue, I'm just going to go ahead and trim my loose yarn ends because I've buried them enough. Make sure that you're just cutting your loose yarn ends if you haven't buried them already. And then I'm ready to continue making my wave pattern around. So this is what my work looks like so far and I'm back to where I first started. 
So now we're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that we made. So just go into that top stitch and then just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. So you can see we completed the bottom half of the wave stitch. Now we're going to complete the top half. So I'm in that first double crochet from the previous row. You can see my five stitches. So to begin the next round, you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And that counts as your first double crochet for the next round. Now you're going to complete your first five double crochet. And again, this first chain three counts as your first one. So you're going to make one double crochet into each of the first five stitches. And you can see that the top of the wave is going to be the same stitch as the previous rows, bottom portion of the wave. So the double crochets and the single crochets are going to line up for this round. So you can see how I completed the top portion of the double crochets. Now I'm going to make my one single crochet into the next five stitches and you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. So I just finished my last stitch and you could see the gorgeous wave stitch that's created in this baby hat. So now we're going to change colors again, but first we need to slip stitch and join the round. So you're going to take, just like we did before, go into the top stitch of that first chain three that we made, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then we're ready to change colors. So now go ahead and just get your new color and then you're just going to bring up a loop and this time I only have one loop on the hook it's because I don't I'm starting on the same stitch so we want to still keep our same stitch count so I'm going to bring up a loop you can chain one and then just take and lay your work down you're going to cut your previous color and then tie your knot now for this round we know we're starting a new wave so with the new wave the bottom portion we're going to have the opposite stitch of the previous row so in the previous row we have double crochets so we're directly over the first double crochet right here so we're going to go ahead and chain one and that's going to count as your first single crochet for the um, next round. Now you're going to go into the next stitch. You're going to go behind the two loose yarn ends and bring up a loop. And then I just wanted to show you here so you can see my chain one. That's going to be the first stitch for when we get back around. Now sometimes where we join this might be larger. So that's something to keep in mind and it's easy to keep track of because we know we're always going to have five stitches. So you may have to skip, if this one's larger, you'll skip that and just go into the real chain one. So I just wanted to point that out so you don't mess up your stitch count. So now I'm going into the next stitch over for my third single crochet next stitch for my fourth single crochet and then the last stitch for my last single crochet and so I have a total of five stitches and they line up with the previous rows double crochet so now I'm going to make a double crochet into each of the next five stitches and in the previous row you could see that there are the single crochet stitches so I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, go behind my loose yarn ends, and make my double crochet. 
So go ahead, finish making your wave stitch, five single crochet, five double crochet, and then repeating this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. Okay, so I just finished my last five double crochet, and this is how my work looks so far. Now we're going to make the top part to complete the wave. And I just wanted to show you here because when you start with the single crochet, sometimes it looks a little um, tricky. So I just want to show you this part. So here, this looks like a stitch, but it's not a stitch. This is where we joined our new color and then made our chain of one. So here's our chain of one. So that's what I pointed out in the beginning. So here you, you can look at your five single crochets. So here's one, two, three, four, and then your fifth stitch. So that was your chain one, and this was where we tied our knot, and this was the stitch that we did it in. So you're going to skip the, this and go into your first stitch to join. So you're going to go into your first stitch, and you can double check because that's number one. Here's two, three, four, and five. So then you know you're, you're making it correctly. So then you just make your slip stitch and join the round. And then your stitch count is not interrupted and your pattern is still correct. So now we're going to finish the top part of the way. So you're going to chain one. That counts as your first single crochet for the round. That chain one will make a stitch for you. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over and since we're making the top part of the wave, the stitches are going to be the same as the previous row. So I'm making a single crochet, and that single crochet is directly over the previous row's single crochet. And that counts as my second stitch. Go into the next stitch for your third single crochet. Next stitch for your fourth single crochet. Next stitch for your fifth single crochet. And then that brings you right up to your five double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, and then complete your five double crochet. So you're going to go ahead, finish repeating this pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started. I just finished my last five double crochet of the wave stitch and you just see the beautiful pattern. And you could see if you're making it correctly too. And then of course working in multiples or sets of five also helps to keep your stitch count and line up all of your stitches. So now I'm back to the beginning and again we're going to have this tricky part with the joining of stitches because we have the chain one and then the previous rows stitch. So sometimes people confuse that stitch as being that first stitch that you need to work into, but actually here is your chain one stitch. And you can double check it by looking at your single crochets from the previous row. So here's my first one, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you can see that that's the stitch, your chain one stitch for joining. So now I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to join. So I'm going to go into my chain one stitch. And then I'm going to make my slip stitch. And then we're ready for the next round. So for this round, it's going to be a decrease round. So I'm going to show you how to make your decrease stitches. So to start the round, you're going to chain one. So you can see how that chain one will lie on top of that stitch and then it could fool you into thinking that's the actual stitch, but the chain one is your actual stitch for this round. Okay, so now you have your chain one and as you can see, the previous rows were a completed full wave. So now we're starting a new bottom wave row. So we want to make 
two more chains. One, two, and this first chain three counts as our first double crochet for the round. And you can see the next four stitches from the previous row are the single crochet stitches. You're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch for your second double crochet. And then a double crochet into the next stitch for your third double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet two stitches together or a double crochet decrease stitch. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into the next stitch over, you're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Four loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. Three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a double crochet decrease stitch. And then you can see how you have one, the beginning chain, two, the second double crochet, three, and then four stitches. So we initially had five, and now we have four. So that's the decrease, why it's called the decrease round. Now we're up to the previous rows, five double crochet stitches. So you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into the third stitch. Now we're going to make a single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Now you have two loops on the hook go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, and then yarn over and go through all three loops for a single crochet decrease stitch. So I'm going to make one more set with you and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So we have the previous rows, five single crochet. We're going to make a single crochet into the first three stitches. So one single crochet into each of the first three stitches and then you're going to make your single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Then you have the five double crochet from the previous round. We're going to make one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then you're going to make your double crochet decrease stitch. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, three loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the three remaining stitches. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. So now I've finished my decrease round and the bottom portion of the wave. So now I'm ready to slip stitch and join the round. And with the first chain three, it's always easy to join because you just go into that top stitch of the first chain three and then just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops. And then you're directly over the first, the previous rows, double crochet stitch. So we're making the top part of the wave so we want to start with a chain of three. One, two, three, and then that counts as the double crochet for the top part of the wave. Now we're going to make a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And this time, instead of five double crochet, you're going to have four because we've made a decrease round on the previous round. 
we decreased the number of stitches in the previous round. So the stitch count now is a stitch count of 56. So you have a 56 stitch count around after making the decrease round. So now I have one double crochet into four stitches. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next four stitches. and then you're just going to repeat. So instead of five now, you have a stitch count of four. So you have the four double crochet and then the four single crochet. Then you're going to make four double crochet, one double crochet in each of the next four stitches, and then one single crochet into the next four stitches. And you're going to repeat that all the way around back to the beginning and when you reach the beginning, you should still have a stitch count of 56. So now I'm back to where I started. You can see the wave pattern that I've created. Then you're just going to take and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made to join the round. Then we're going to make another decrease round. So you're going to look at the previous row. The previous row was the top portion of the wave, the completed wave. So we're starting a new wave and we're making a decrease round. So since the previous row, the top portion of the wave, was a double crochet, we're going to start the next round with a single crochet. So you're going to make a chain of one and that's going to count as your first single crochet for the next round. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to make a single crochet two stitches together for your decrease stitch. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to make let's see, another double crochet into the next stitch for your second double crochet. And then you're going to double crochet two stitches together. And you're just going to keep repeating this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. I'm going to make one more set with you. So I'm going to make a single crochet into the next two stitches. And then I'm going to single crochet two stitches together. Then I'm going to make a double crochet into the next two stitches. and then I'm going to double crochet two stitches together. So go ahead, keep repeating this pattern all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning and you should have a total of 42 stitches for that last decrease round. And now we're going to make a slip stitch I just wanted to show you again because, again, this is a little tricky here because, let me bring it in a little bit closer. Again, you think that this is the stitch that you need to work in for the slip stitch, but this is actually the chain one stitch. So make sure you grab the right stitch. So you're going to go into the chain one stitch and you're going to make your slip stitch. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then you're ready to make the top portion of the wave stitch. So you're going to chain one.
and then that chain one matches the first single crochet from the previous row and then you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop make your single crochet so this is your second stitch and then go into the next stitch for your last single crochet so you have three total single crochet then you're going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches so now instead of four you're down to three because of your decrease round so you're going to repeat one single crochet into three stitches and it's going to line up with the previous rows single crochets and the previous rows double crochets so one single crochet into three stitches one double crochet into three stitches and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and your stitch count should remain the same you should still have a 42 stitch count okay so now I'm back to the beginning and again you have the chain one stitch you want to make sure that you go into the chain one stitch it's a little bit smaller and make your slip stitch and then we're going to get ready for the next round which is going to be a decrease round so you're going to make a chain of three one two three because we completed the full wave on the previous rounds so you can see the full wave that we completed so now we're starting a new half wave the bottom portion of the wave so the previous row we had single crochet so we're going to start with a double crochet so this first chain three counts as your first double crochet then you're going to double crochet two stitches together so yarn over go into the next stitch over which is the previous row's single crochet bring up a loop make your double crochet I mean sorry yarn over go through two of the loops you have two loops left on the hook yarn over go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop yarn over go through two of the loops three loops remaining yarn over and go through those three remaining loops for a double crochet two stitches together or your decrease stitch now you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning so next stitch will be one double crochet then double crochet two stitches together then single crochet in the next stitch then single crochet two stitches together so go ahead repeat this pattern all the way around and then come back now I'm back to the beginning I have a total of 28 stitches in the round I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made so just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook now I'm going to make the top part of the wave so I'm going to go ahead and since I, the previous row is a double crochet I'm going to top the wave with a double crochet so I'm going to chain three one two three and then I'm going to make one double crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the next two stitches and then a double crochet one double crochet in the next two st stitches so now you can see how we've decreased to, to two stitches so two single crochet one single crochet into two stitches and then one double crochet into two stitches and you are going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and you should have 28 stitches still when you get back to the beginning 
Then you can take and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain 3 that you made. Then you're going to chain 1. And now we're just going to make decrease stitches. So the first single crochet decrease round is going to be one single crochet into the next three stitches. So I have a total, including that first chain one, you have a total of one, two, three, four stitches and then you make your decrease stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around one single crochet into four stitches and then your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning Okay, so I'm back to the beginning. I have three remaining stitches and then I have my starting stitch and chain one. So this is actually my chain one. So I'm going to make one single crochet into the remaining stitches, remaining three stitches, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the chain one so actually I have one more here, so four. Skip the next stitch and then slip stitch into the chain one stitch. And then I'll give you the stitch count for that round. So I finished with 23 stitches in the round. Don't worry if you're off by one or two stitches. It doesn't really matter as much at this point because we're just closing the top like it would matter with the design portion. So now, if you want to, I mean you don't have to, but if you want to, you can take and use a yarn marker at this point to help keep track of where you are in the round. Then you're going to make you're going to continue making the decrease rounds. So this next decrease round is going to be one single crochet into 3 stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into three stitches and then your decrease stitch. So I finished that last round with 19 stitches in the round. Moved my yarn marker up and then the next decrease round is one single crochet into two stitches and then your single crochet two stitches together. So now you can see that we're almost closed and then at this point you can just take and skip the next stitch then go into the next stitch yarn over and then just bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch so then you're just going to skip a stitch and then slip stitch closed all the way around so skip a stitch go into the next stitch and then yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops and you're going to keep doing that until the hat, the top of the hat is closed. So you can see that it's almost closed. I'm just going around and then just slip stitching it closed. almost closed by one more and then I'm just going to finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work and then I'm just going to show you how to bury your loose yarn ends so now you're just going to take your tapestry needle put it onto the loose yarn end at the top of the hat and then you're just going to bring it into the wrong side of the hat. At this point you can also add a pom-pom if you wanted to. For mine I'm not going to add a pom-pom. 
And then you just take the loose yarn ends, both loose yarn ends, and you're going to weave it into the wrong side of the hat. So you just take and weave it through the wrong side. And I like to go several directions just to make sure it's nice and buried. And then when you're finished burying it, you just trim it. So go ahead, you should only have one more loose yarn end on the inside. Go ahead and bury your loose yarn end and then come back. So I just wanted to show you, this is the back of a hat and you can barely tell where the seam is. And then on the front of the hat, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to give you the measurements now.